One of the reasons we study relational databases to the extent we do is that they are the by far the most dominant data storage structure in use today for what are called enterprise systems. which are basically the systems in place at the companies we're going to be auditing. Now, the dominant type of uh, enterprise system in use, especially for accounting purposes, are something called ERPs, Enterprise Resource Planning. And as the name suggests, resource planning indicates manufacturing efficiencies and the like. And that is where most ERPs grew from, from manufacturing-based systems, manufacturing resource planning, MRP and MRP2, to full-blown enterprise resource planning that covers virtually all aspects of the organization. As additional enterprise systems have been developed, such as customer relationship management, Salesforce automation, uh, logistics, and the like, many of the large ERP vendors have incorporated those or even acquired companies that created those software modules, and they incorporated them into their overall ERP. So ERPs, which started basically as manufacturing and accounting systems, have grown to encompass all types of corporate activity. ERPs just about all use the relational model. For their database. There may be some not using a relational model, but uh, I have not run across any. I've been to dozens of clients uh, over the course of my career, and they all used an ERP that did use a relational database as its backbone. So that means they're using foreign keys and primary keys to link tables together. And you could think of large ERPs have hundreds of tables. And if you think about a system like SAP, that starts with about 3,000 tables and can be 10,000 tables or more by the time all of the corporate structures and legal entities and consolidation and roll-up systems have been put in place for an organization. In all of these, whether it's 3,000 or 10,000 or even just several hundred, tables are going to have various relationships between them that uh, can get very complicated to keep track of. So knowledge of the database itself and how the information is linked becomes critical in investigating transaction and financial reporting information in ERPs. So enterprise systems allow for integration of the various business processes. So what do we mean by that? Well, not too long ago, most departments, most functional areas, whether it be manufacturing or accounting or finance and treasury, or logistics and distribution, human resources, all, each of them had their own system. They had a separate HR system. There was a separate accounting system. There was a separate manufacturing system that each managed that piece of the organization. So communicating between those various systems was difficult at best and awful at worst to the point where in manufacturing, they may be tracking things by different organizational structures, different regional structures and, and uh, operating entities, different uh, accounts, different uh, cost centers, that whole bit, than the 
financial accounting system. And HR may have its own way of doing things. So there would be a lot of incompatible metadata lists of uh, classifications for organizing transactions. So if HR wanted to report something in detail and then the financial reporting people took the same HR information and tried to report it, they may have it classified a little bit differently uh, and it, it could be very difficult to uh, integrate. So by coordinating everything within the ERP and in one database with tables linked together, the communication and the structures across the organization are much more consistent. There's much greater transparency in following the information through an enterprise system, especially compared to legacy systems. Again, since all of the transactions are linked, the audit trail is a lot easier to follow. You don't have to jump from one system to another. Take a look at maybe some custom coded integration tools or integration programs that were built to connect different systems together. Uh, so there's a lot more transparency. Informational benefits include better quality of information. You know, some of the information qualities we were talking about in the very early discussions. More complete. More timely. More accurate. And therefore more relevant. And as the backbone, of the organization's information flow, it can support business processes across the organization and even external to the organization. And this becomes important when we consider the value chain in the supply chain regarding how to manage inventory flows, supply flows, uh, and how to manage our relationships with the customers and allow them to interact with us from a transaction standpoint. Now enterprise systems are not a panacea. They certainly come with their own set of challenges, not the least of which is consistent integration rules. There is a political aspect of putting in enterprise systems that forces organizations to work together across the board. And that can involve some compromise between different functional areas who've been used to doing things certain ways and forcing them to maybe bend a little bit so that all the information can follow one set of rules. So integrating all these various modules uh, is a challenge for the various modules. Integrating with external systems can be a challenge as well. Now that's not unique to enterprise, you know, the ERPs, it was certainly a challenge with uh, older legacy systems as well. But you think about the information systems various suppliers are going to have, various customers are going to have. Uh, I guess the fact that ERPs allow for easier integration gives companies the incentive to integrate with the suppliers and customers, which brings it maybe uh, makes it a challenge that's brought more to the forefront than it may have been with legacy systems. Now there may be some case where existing legacy systems need to be put in place, it need to be kept in place. There is no substitute that's been built. Uh, there have been some extremely 
customized systems built that fill a specific need for your company. Uh, maybe the way that you prepare defense contract bids and merge those into the system, into the uh, financials and manufacturing systems needs to be, is so specialized that there's no alternative available for it. So integration with legacy systems. can be a challenge. Data conversion is a huge challenge. Any data that's sitting in old systems, especially if you've got multiple different systems, needs to be converted to the common structure that has been designed in the new enterprise system. And when implementing a new system, often structures you know, the opportunity to redesign structures is available and companies take advantage of it. So so things as simple as the chart of accounts all the way to the org structure The new system may make available new legal and consolidation structure. A new system for, you know, product identification, product grouping. may be available. So lots of, of uh, changes uh, just from a data conversion standpoint. And then, as with any large organization, big project with many moving parts, many people with competing interests taking part in this. Uh, people have career aspirations. People want to uh, have their fiefdoms or have power in the organization in one sense or another. So there are competing interests and you know any time you need to get a big organization moving or changing direction, uh, it doesn't always happen quickly and with it doesn't always happen without problems. Enterprise systems Certainly lots of benefits, but also their own set of challenges. Recently, in the last few years, the cloud has come up and cloud enterprise systems are certainly taking their place at the table with regard to market share and interest. We've got a lot of cloud services, you know, Gmail, other, you know, Dropbox. So for email and data storage, if you think about website hosting, that's basically been a cloud service for quite some time. Now enterprise systems are coming up as a viable alternative. NetSuite has, uh, is the company that's probably most well known and has been doing the cloud ERP computing longest. They compete, they have competed mainly in the mid size company marketplace, but uh, certainly they're trying to expand their offerings and appeal more to larger organizations with more money to spend as well. And basically, all cloud systems are. internet-based computing. In one of many, in one of many niches. So it could be cloud storage, it could be cloud email, it could be cloud development. Well, in cloud enterprise systems or cloud ERP, we're basically looking at doing our ERP exclusively with all of the data stored exclusively on an internet-based provider 
and with users interacting with it via a web browser based front end interface. With the advances in server processing and internet pipeline speed, cloud computing and cloud enterprise systems are certainly viable. It's just a matter of comfort level for companies to determine whether it's something they want to pursue and whether the vendors are providing a secure environment, a secure enough environment for companies to buy into it. And of course, there are advantages and challenges as well. Some of the challenges sensitive data, requires controls and security. Can the organization trust the cloud service provider to provide secure enough operations for their data? Now, in many cases, especially for small and medium-sized enterprises, the cloud provider is going to have better security than the company itself will. Most companies don't have enough interest in or a big enough IT staff to stay cutting edge and current with all types of uh, security challenges. Now, on the other hand, a bigger provider like a cloud provider may be a more tempting target for someone trying to get at data. So uh, even though they may have better security, they may have more people trying to get in. So there are all kinds of uh, things to consider, sensitive data, secure, what are the backup capabilities, can the company back up data uh, to its own site so they do have access to it uh, if for some reason the cloud service goes down. So all kinds of uh, issues there. Anyway, these will be some of the concerns that face you as you go out to start working with your clients. Uh, some clients are moving to cloud-based ERPs already. Your smaller and medium-sized firms may be doing that, but the large firms uh, may be considering it as well. The NetSuites have started seeing some success. It took NetSuite 10 years to become profitable. They now are. SAP, Oracle, and the big guys had resisted moving to the cloud, but now that they're seeing companies show more interest in it, they're starting to accelerate their efforts there and are now providing some pretty good cloud alternatives themselves. So it'll be interesting to see, and it's actually cheaper for them to develop and distribute their software using over the cloud than it is to make sure that all of their customers have the right software CDs or downloads on their desktops. So, so we'll see some changes in emphasis and changes in the way your clients are operating their ERPs uh, over the next few years.